As the nation moves closer to the 2020 presidential elections, Democrat candidates are about to find out who among them is viable as Iowa prepares the caucus. One America's Megan Dyke breaks down how the nation's first testing ground sets the scene for presidential hopefuls. The general election season is officially underway and Democrats hoping to take the presidential nomination are about to undergo their first viability test in the Hawkeye state. Iowans are preparing for next month's caucuses, which serve as a battleground for the left's large field of candidates who have devoted weeks of face time with supporters. But some are wondering why the upcoming caucus, the first in the nation, has taken on a significant role in the primary season. You know, our goal in, in Iowa is to come in first. That's what we want to do. I'm not sure we'll do it. It wasn't until 1976 when then-Democrat Georgia Governor Jimmy Carter, a little-known candidate to most, spent countless hours surveying whether he would be a favorable presidential contender. Despite only taking in 27 percent of the vote in second place, Carter was declared the winner due to uncommitted voters taking 37 percent, leaving other candidates out to dry. This helped Carter set the stage for future candidates about the importance of appealing to voters with FaceTime, even if you're campaigning on a tight budget. I'm a farmer. I'm a full-time farmer. If I can exemplify what the American people would like to see in their president, then I'll be elected. If I can't meet those high demands, and I hope they are high, I don't deserve to be president. In 1972, Iowa established a new set of rules making up the caucusing process to make nominating a candidate as transparent as possible instead of a traditional primary where voters cast ballots in relative secret. This in an effort to draw in young, minority, and female demographics. On caucus night, registered caucus goers will head to one of the state's more than 1,600 precincts where they will form groups by their candidate of choosing who will need at least 15% of support to qualify. Otherwise, individuals who rally behind those who don't make the cut will have to join another group or abstain from the process. The night's results will determine how many of the state's 49 delegates will be allocated to each candidate. As it stands, President Trump has led over his Democrat opponents in the state, due largely in part to his presence on the ground in touting Iowa's massive agricultural sector. More American ethanol production also means less dependence on foreign suppliers. By fully embracing E15, we will reduce dependence on foreign oil by up to 250 million additional barrels every single year. It means more energy. And what can be wrong with that? And it's very good energy. That means our farmers are not only promoting our prosperity, you are protecting our security as a nation. According to a December poll from Real Clear Politics, he's still leading over the most viable candidates. This includes former Vice President Joe Biden, as well as Senators Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. Meantime, with February 3rd on the horizon, there's still time for Iowa voters to form a backup plan in case their favorite contender does not rake up support come caucus night. Megan Dyke, One American News. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One American News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One American News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.